All right. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. So today's webinar is Building a Monthly Budget, and we are presenting this for the Georgia Thriving Child Care Business Academy. My name is Jen Vale, and I'm an Associate Director with Civitas Strategies, and I'll be your presenter today. Um, Civitas Strategies is a na national team of child care business coaches and trainers, and we work with the Thriving Child Care Business Academy to bring Georgia providers critical information, resources, and skill building to support business successfully and sustainably. So today's session will last probably a little under an hour, which does include a question and answer. So if everyone doesn't mind holding their questions till the end, and then we'll have a nice Q&A period where you'll be able to ask any questions you have or share any feedback that you may have on your budgeting process. So we certainly welcome participation uh, when we get to that, the end of the actual uh, presentation there. So. We look forward to engaging in any conversations at the end that you would like to have. So with that being said, we're going to start our presentation. All right here. So one thing that we do start with is a disclaimer. Just get that out of the way that the information contained here is prepared by Civitas Strategies and is not intended to constitute legal, tax, or financial advice. The Civitas Strategies team has used reasonable efforts in collecting, preparing, and providing this information, but does not guarantee its accuracy, completeness, adequacy, or currency. And the publication and distribution of this information is not intended to create, and receipt does not constitute an attorney-client or any other advisory relationship, and reproduction of this information is expressly prohibited. Thank you. Hi, Jen. Can you just double check your screen share for us, please? Oh, I apologize. What are we looking at, hon? Just you. Well, I'm so sorry. That's all right. Thank you for that. Are we doing there? That's perfect. Thank okay. You. So I, I'm so sorry. I apologize. I set it up so early that I didn't realize that. So sorry. Thank you very much for, uh, for letting me know. I appreciate that. So, all right. So in today's conversation, we're going to explore the benefits of maintaining a monthly budget, what financial information you're going to need to build a budget, and how to get started. So there are some really valuable steps that we'll go over with the goal being at the end of the presentation, you'll have an understanding of how to create your own monthly budget. So, All right, so why do you need a budget? Well, a budget is an annual budget, as well as a monthly, is a critical tool for managing your childcare business. It'll help you plan for what you spend. It'll help you monitor your actual revenue and your expenses. So why do we want to do that? We want to keep on track, right? So we want to be very, very aware of our revenue and our expenses. And that's a monthly budget. What will happen is a year of doing a monthly budget, a year long budget may seem out of reach, right? So we talk about annual budget, but we know creating that whole entire year budget, that may not be realistic for, for your business. So what do we suggest is that you start your budgeting process with a monthly time frame. So that's a lot easier to manage if you break it down month by month rather than looking at it as a, a whole year. So that monthly time frame it does help you build a foundation um, that allows you to manage any necessary adjustments as you move forward, because a budget is basically a living thing. So. With the budget, we're able to make corrections, and especially if we have a monthly budget, things change, right? So we're able to go ahead and, and make those changes. So it's going to help you uh, basically be on really stable financial footing and help you also plan for the months to come. So budget, extremely important. All right, so what we're gonna do in the webinar is we will take you through step by step how you create a budget and how you track the budget. 
So um, providing this budgeting tool will help you during times of uncertainty. So the goal being to help you eliminate that uncertainty. Now, once you get a hang of the exercise and it becomes very common to you, you're going to want to make it one of your monthly business habits. So what we're going to learn today is something that you're in, going to integrate into your calendar that you're going to be able to continue month after month to truly be informed about the health of your, of your business. And once you get used to doing the month to month, you then could consider perhaps you do one quarterly and then six months, and then a year, you could work this into stages. You don't have to jump right from a month to annual budgeting. You will not have to do that. So but that month will start us off and we'll, we'll go forward from there. So talked about the steps, four easy steps, right? So you're gonna gather information. You're going to list income. You're going to list your expenses and you're gonna track the actual numbers and build for the next month. So that's the great thing about budgeting. The budget that you create now basically helps you move to the next month, create that next month's budget and be very well aware of what your planning is for the following month. So that's how they, they roll month into month, really important. All right, so step one, we're gonna gather information. So what does that look like? You're going to pull two to three months of documents that show your income and your expenses. So this is where you go back and this may be digital. You may have this on your computer. You may have printed. You may even have some of this information on your phone, but you want to pull the documents that show your income and your expenses so that you have that information when you start to build the budget. So that information could come from bank statements, credit card statements, Transactions like Venmo, so anything that you have, uh, Cash App, Zelle, anything that you're receiving payments or you're paying expenses, you would want to keep track of those. Utility bills and really any other way that you receive or spend money, you're going to want to pull those documents together to give you the most accurate view of your revenue and your expenses. Now, it would be great in a monthly budget if you had the exact numbers, but sometimes that's not possible. Sometimes it may just be an average number. Having the exact gives greater um, accuracy, right? So that's always fantastic when you have the actual number, but you can still create a budget if you have pulled together something that, you know, perhaps you would just have an average of a utility bill, an average of of, you know, whatever the expense or revenue may be. So don't be thrown off if you don't happen to have an average. We don't want that to discourage you from starting building your, your budget. It's, it's okay. So you can look at your average elect electric bill. You could take a few months and look at that uh, average and you can use, you can use that. It, so basically round up if you're going to be doing an average. We don't want to round down because we want to err on the side of caution. So you would go ahead and you would round up any expenses that you are averaging. And that gives you a little bit of a cushion, right? So that that's what we want to do. We want to make sure that we have realistic numbers and that we're not underestimating anything. So we're going to move on then to what we do next in gathering information. All right. So step two now is listing income. So you want to determine an accurate monthly income. First thing you need to do is you've got to calculate all of that money that you bring in based on the number of children at different rates, right? So not every child, very good chance that not every child is bringing in the same amount of revenue. So really what you want to do is you want to create and have some materials together that will allow you to track by age group, um, will allow you to track subsidy. You'll want to tr uh, be able to track any fees, such as a tuition fee that you may charge, late payment fees, registration fees, supply fees, any of those particular um, uh, income that you may be receiving, you're going to want to, to go ahead and track track that there. 
You may be also receiving things from the food program, right, from the uh, ACCFP. So if you are receiving any of that income, you're going to want to list that in your monthly budget. So um, basically, you'll see... Um, we're going to look at something next. We're going to look at a schedule of where you would go ahead and you would put in all of the different uh, fees that you receive for the different ages. You're going to see an area where you're going to put in fees should you have um, any of those extras that we that we talked about there. Um, you're going to see that there's a place always that you have an other category. So just kind of keep keep that in mind when we look at what were uh, the little charts that we're going to look at next, we're going to see exactly what information that we're tracking. So here is an example of how you can go about tracking, in this case, your revenue. How are you going to track your revenue? And just as we discussed, we do have it broken down by the actual monthly rate that you receive. In this instance, how many children do you receive uh, the, the, are you caring for that you would receive that monthly rate? What is the actual monthly total per child? And then what is the, the total revenue? So just kind of keep, keep that in mind as you go through. You're going to be tracking children depending on the rates, very important. Any type of those extras, whether it's fees, you'll see that you can put in total revenue for fees, you can put in other, always have an other because there may be other forms of income that you are taking in. So you'll want to be really have this type of, of um, spreadsheet really, really accurate, right? As accurate as you possibly can be for your, for your fees. And you know, as things change, like we're working on this budget, but maybe next month we have children in a different category, a different monthly rate. So Things will change from month to month, but when we get started, the month that we've chosen, let's get the most accurate picture that we possibly can. You see here we have for children without subsidy, children with subsidy. So that might be a very accurate way of, of breaking it down. So th that will be our revenue from fees in general. So basically our revenue that we're taking in. All right. Step number three is now we're going to list the expenses. So the first thing with your expenses is you need to categorize each month and you're going to list out the expenses. So you're going to want to build categories and you'll basically see that there's also an other. We're going to, going to take a look at something um, that will show you how that you can build, build that out. Um, you're going to always have that other. Now we have the notation here on the slide, as you see, don't forget to consider time space calculation in your costs, in your expenses, right? So if you are a family home provider and you are using shared space of the home, you do need to take time space into consideration for that expense. So an, ex an example of using time space would be for the electric bill. We know if you have an electric bill for the house, not all of that is subject, uh, not all of that really is used for the childcare business. Some of it's used for your personal use for your family. So you would use your time space calculation, that percentage that you have that you use on your taxes, and you would use that with your expenses to calculate the proper amount of the expense that you're going to list. So don't forget any shared expenses. If you are a home provider, please make sure you do that calculation before you list the expense. Otherwise, it won't be accurate. Now, of course, if you're a center, under almost every circumstance, all of those expenses would be 100% for the business. But in the case of home providers, we do need to take time space into, into consideration. All right. So we've pulled all of those expenses. We've pulled all of our revenue. Step four, tracking the, the actuals, tracking the actuals there. So when you make a budget, you're going to have a planned column and then we're gonna have an actual column because sometimes what we plan for 
isn't what happens, right? So we may have an amount that we've planned for and then something, maybe there was an increase in a, in a fee and an expense, or maybe our revenue went up and we didn't, didn't expect that. But first we plan in a budget for what we expect those numbers to be. And then at the end of the month, we track the actuals. So we really wanna be able to see, this is what I thought it was going to be. This is what I ended up getting. So that's before basically you start the next month, you're going to want to look and see what your profit is based on your absolute actuals, because that's the real the real hard number there, right? So if there happens to be a negative, then you're going to need extra money to get by this month, and you're going to have to plan going into the following month for how you're going to offset that negative number in the budget, right? So we're all hoping that our budget, when we take our, our revenue minus our expenses, we're all hoping that that's a positive number. And if it is, we would figure out how we're going to be utilizing that, that profit. If it's not, we're gonna plan ahead for what are we gonna do? First of all, where are we going to get that money from? And then second, what are we going to do going into the future? So um, we wanna make sure that we're, that we're doing that. Um, um, basically, we'll see this continued spreadsheet where you're going to fill out the actual information. So what we planned and our actual there. And at the end, you'll know how much money you made or how much you need to make up to stay open. So, so this here is the monthly budget table. Um, how we would recommend that we look at that budget planned versus actual. So if we go down here in this particular example, we have listed fees. So we've listed the, the tuition fees. What did we plan and what was our actual tuition intake for the month? Subsidy payment. What did we plan? Actual for the month and so on. So once we've added up uh, to the spreadsheet, once we've put in all of the actual uh, revenue that we have, that we planned, uh, excuse me, once we have our plan numbers that we put in there and we add in our actual revenue, then let's look at the total. This is the total of what we planned for. This is the total of what we had. How close are those numbers? Why are they different? Get you to stop and think back over the course of the month and really take into consideration some things that may have changed because that will help you predict going into future months. We do the same thing with expenses. We list every expense that we're going to have. We list the expenses in the beginning of the month, what we planned for, at the end of the month, what our actual expenses were. And then we're going to total all of those expenses. Then we go back up to our revenue and we take our revenue, we subtract our expenses, and that gives us hopefully a positive number. We look at what our plan, what we thought our revenue, our total um, profit was going to be, what we hoped our profit was going to be, and what it actually was. And then you're going to want to take note of, as I said, of the differences. So go down line by line and say, wait a second, why aren't the fees what I thought they were? If it's higher, oh, Fantastic. We had higher revenue. We had children aged into different groups. We uh, received additional subsidy payments, whatever that may be. Great. If it's not what we planned and it's lower, why was that? Does that now mean that we um, have availability and we should be doing some additional advertising to reach capacity? Taking a look at, at something like that. So really, it makes a lot of sense not just with an expense, but also with a revenue that you look at your planned column and you look at your actual. Now, when you have a number in the planned column that is different than what the actual is, of course, you're thinking about why. Why could that possibly, possibly have happened? Why didn't I plan for that? Is it going to happen again? And how long can I expect that change to occur. Maybe it's a change in your electric rate 
Well, that means going forward in the planned column, we're now planning for that increase. So sometimes when there's a difference between the planned and the actual, it could be, logistically, it could be a one-time thing. And when you're planning the budget for the next month, it isn't something that you need to carry over. Or it could be something that changes the budgets for the rest of the year or for you know, a certain period of time. And that, again, helps set a foundation for the, the numbers, you know, the months, all of the months to come. So as we said in the very beginning, right, you can build that budget over the course of a month, as we're discussing today, quarterly, six months, and eventually annually for the year, if you feel it would be helpful. Um, if you're new to budgeting, that's a really great practice. So it's fantastic to basically be able to go through and look at, compare month to month, compare uh, looking at you know what it looks like in six months it'll help you plan for next year without a doubt so we're really setting ourselves up for success monthly budgeting budgeting in general foundation to having the understanding of the health of your business so by all means we want to make sure that we uh, really are doing this as accurate and as often as we feel we need to so you will want to move from that monthly into a slight, you know, into a larger amount of budgeting, farther out budgeting, but it doesn't have to be be a year. Um, and you still will go in if you make a six month budget. You're still going to go in and you have what you planned in the beginning of that six months, and you're going to go back and you're going to put in the actual numbers. Take a look at that. Really reflect back on why are there changes? What could you be doing different? so that those numbers are positive or more positive. Um, you know, things that, again, if there were windfalls that you didn't expect, how did those happen? What? How did I end up with more revenue than I thought I was going to? Why did that utility go down so low? And see, is it gonna be a trend? Is it going to be something that you're going to see repetitively month after month? And what can I do to keep up the good and what do I need to do if, I, if those expenses are, if there's not enough comfort between my revenue and my expenses, where are we going to make changes, right? So is there anything that we can cut back or do we just, are we going to increase our revenue or are we going to be decreasing our expenses? I think it's a good thing for the health of any business to really keep your eye on your expenses, even in positive months. So you make this budget, things are looking good. You have the revenue, maybe even more revenue than you planned. But every so often, you're going to want to reevaluate those expenses. Look for areas where you could be saving a little more money, right, to increase that revenue at the end of the day. So basically, you've increased the profit and you're able to pay yourself more, to make improvements, perhaps to offer benefits to your employees. So it's always a good, um, really a good habit of taking that budget, looking at those expenses all in one list and making any adjustments needed if it can help you increase your profit. So you just wanna kind of keep, uh, keep that in mind there. So. so actually now we're going to open it up for uh, some questions. So if anybody would like to come off mute, if you have any questions, or Margaret, if you see any questions in the chat, if we happen to have anything there, I'm taking a quick look myself. There we go. All right. Excuse me. I just I'm just going through the chat and I apologize. I don't see any questions yet. So, um, you know, I would hope that monthly budgeting is something that you now really are going. And I see a note here, where could I find this spreadsheet? We will refer you um, back over to the, the Thriving Child Care Program. Uh, if they don't have the resources available, our organization will make those resources. I do know that you also, if you were to Google monthly budget child, child care business, you will see that there are templates online, but we will uh, bring the request back. And if, if the um, 
if our host doesn't happen to have the resource available, then we will go ahead and, and provide it from, from Civitas. You know, it's a, a it's a basic spreadsheet, but it is really nice to have everything lined up and, and re, as a reminder of where things go and make it a little easier. If you're an Excel whiz, you know, by all means, you'll just set up a formula and you'll put it into Excel. If you're a business that you do more things with pen and paper, then you're able to go ahead and, and uh, you know, just keep a, a running list of that. Uh, since we don't seem to have any, uh, oh, thank you, Margaret. Thank you for, for sharing that. So Margaret has put uh, kindly put some links in our chat that is helping us to, we can direct you to the attachments for building a monthly budget. So that that is fantastic there. So I'm just kind of just checking out the chat on there. So the spreadsheet and the list are both available in the written guide. So if you don't mind referring to the chat, go, going to those links available both in English and in Spanish, and you'll be able to get, get those resources. So that's that's fantastic. Thank you, Margaret, for being being on top of that. So I appreciate that. Uh, def definitely great tools to, to have. Um, one thing, you know, just as a little aside, we talk about, you know, gathering in the beginning, right? Gathering all of that information, gathering all of our expenses, gathering all of our revenue. You really need to have a very good system of organizing your papers uh, throughout the year. Always for tax time, you need that. And that same process, obviously, is going to lend itself to monthly budgeting. So that's that's fantastic. So kind of put a, a process in place where you are collecting and have a very good idea of your revenue, have a very good idea of your expenses. So keeping all those documents together on an ongoing basis certainly will help with monthly budgeting. So do that there. All right, we'll just, we have any questions? I don't, anything in the chat, Margaret? Looks like we have a lot of folks saying thank you for those guides. So that I'm really glad that you're going to use those links, go to those resources and be able to utilize them so that you can get onto your, your budgeting habits. So that's fantastic. So, so I really want to thank everybody for taking the time to join us today. And let's kind of go over what it is that we learned just to just to reinforce everything. So basically, we understand that a, bu a budget can support the business, that it's an essential foundation for a healthy financial picture of your business. So right there, that's why it's a necessity there. Now you know what information you need to gather. You know that you need to gather all of that income from your fees and, and so on from subsidy, any programs that you receive funding, you're going to go ahead and, and put all of that into your revenue. You know that you're going to list every expense that you have, your um, expenses at the beginning of the month. We're going to take that monthly budget and we're going to plan based on what our expenses have been. We're going to plan what those expenses are, what we expect them to be by the end of the month, based on everything that we've already gathered from the previous month. And then at the end of that month, we're going to set ourselves up for the next month budget and look at that, what we planned and what actually happened. And that then will be the foundation of the following month, right? Because if we think, okay, these circumstances are going to be the same month to month, we'll carry that number over. If there's a big change that could possibly happen in the months to come, we're going to want to use those actual numbers, make an adjustment to the following month. And that's why it just basically kind of rolls into one another and becomes one big picture. And eventually you will progress past just doing one month at a time. You'll still do monthly budgets. So I, I really should bring that up. You're still going to do monthly budgets because things change month to month. But you're also going to, when you do those six month pictures, three months for a quarter or six months, when you do those, those are going to be in addition to the monthly. So because we're planning, right? So we're going to look at what would six months expenses look like? Great. We put that in. We have a picture of what we plan the next six months to be. And then six months into the future, what were the actuals? In the meantime, you're still building a very accurate budget month to month 
to month. So just keep that, keep that in mind that you will continue to work on your monthly budgets and hopefully in addition, build out budgets for the time to come. So that, that is definitely, um, def definitely important there. So, all right. So here's something very important on this slide. So we highly encourage you to go to DECAL's Thriving Child Care Business Academy website, right? So that is www.decal.ga.gov forward slash thriving. And um, it's possible that Margaret's already put that in the chat. I'm not, I'm not sure here. Let me just go into Q&A there. I oh, see we have a Spanish question in the Q&A. So if we, if our interpreter could help us with that. But um, Margaret, if you don't mind putting the link in, into the chat. So there are study guides. That's one of the links that Margaret gave you were to study guides. There are guides on all different topics, many, many different topics solely relating to child care. So those are customized for you as child care providers, a lot of great content that they're providing you. You're gonna see upcoming webinars and links to attend those upcoming webinars. So you're going to wanna do that. Uh, those are great, great, great resources. The webinars, you know, we, we bring professionals on to, to speak with you. So go to the, to the library of the self-study guides and figure out what works for what your business needs and, and go ahead and, and um, access those. It looks like we're going to be doing about, as far as the webinars go, we're going to be doing two each month through August of 2024. So there are a lot of opportunities for upcoming webinars in really, really relevant topics. But one of the things that I'm super excited about, Civitas is really excited about, are small study groups. So you actually have the opportunity to join these small groups. They're capped at 10 participants. And basically there are these tracks that give you the opportunity to do a really deep dive into different topics. So and basically they're all relevant to running a childcare business as childcare businesses need support right now. And there are many, many topics it gets, because those small groups, it gets catered to what you need. You get to have a lot of conversations. You have someone who is facilitating the conversation, bringing you first a lot of knowledge, and then you get to reflect on it. You get to talk about how it's going to help you in your business, ask whatever questions you want. So these small 10 participant groups through many, many different topics are so crucial to helping you better your child care business. They're all put together with the success of your child care business in mind. And you know, if you enjoy attending the webinars and you learn something from either today or from any webinar that you attend, think of this as personalized uh, knowledge, something that's really tailored to you and that you get the opportunity it's also always nice to share with your peers. So there may be people within that group that they've got a success story that you could learn from. There may be something that you really, really would like to go ahead and, um, and learn about more. So by all means, please do go into um, D, the uh, decal, go to decal.ga.gov forward slash thriving to register for those small study groups there. Now I'm getting a message about the reminder, please, about time and space. So I'm sorry that I missed that. I am just going back. If anybody would like to read me the question as I scrolling through, huh? partially there. Margaret, are you able to read the question for me? Yeah, so the question from our Spanish provider, Spanish-speaking provider, was um, to go back to review um, the reminder you mentioned about time and space, how to use your time and space calculation in your budget. Oh, ab absolutely. So what's really important when you're looking at your expenses and you're a home-based child care provider is that we need to have the time-space calculation. And I'm not 100% sure, but that library of tools on the DECAL website 
most likely there is something there on time space. Excuse me that I'm not not familiar if it is a hundred if I'm not a hundred percent sure that it's there, but they have such a beautiful library of tools. And so with time space, right, that is a calculation that you would be using on your taxes as a home provider to determine the amount of an expense that you can take off of your taxes. And in this instance, it's the percentage of the expense that you're going to put on your budget. So time space, simply put, what time space does is we look at, we're going to be doing some measuring of the physical space within your business. And the physical space gets divided into two different categories. Now, one category is what is basically exclusive use. There's an area in your home that is not used for anything else other than childcare. You're going to measure that space, measure those spaces. Those spaces cannot be used for anything having to do with your family. So perhaps you have a closet that is only used for childcare. You would measure the square footage of that closet. Right. So we want to we want to take that into consideration. If you had a room, however, that the children nap in, but you also use for something for your family, that's not an exclusive use space. So after you've determined and measured the square feet of any exclusive use space, you're then going to measure all of the regular use space and regular use space are the spaces that are shared with your family. So there are spaces that your child care business occurs in, but your family also uses that space as well. So that could be your living room. Maybe the children play with their toys and are in your living room getting all that great care that you, that you provide. But at the end of the day, after the children have left, that's where the family watches television. Well, any expense that you're going to be calculating as a home provider, you need to calculate the idea that not 100% of that space and all of the expenses related to that space, like electricity, not all of that is allowable. Only the percentage, the time space percentage that you've calculated for your child care business versus your home as a whole. And as the name implies, time and space. So what ends up happening is you end up determining the percentage of space um, based on the total square footage of your home and then the square footage of the regular use space, square footage of the exclusive use space. And then you turn to the time element and you look to see in terms of how many hours your business is open, uh, basically a year. So what we're doing, and, and it doesn't have to be hours that the children are there. It can be the prep time before, can be the cleanup time after, it, basically going by whatever number of days. Most businesses, you are taking a vacation a week here or a week there, so we're not going to most likely count all 52 weeks, all, the, all 365 days of the year, because maybe we're five days a week with two vacation days. But you basically, you count that number and then you perform a calculation. And I'm pretty sure that, that DECAL has that in the library. Um, so that would be fantastic. If you go there, it actually gives you the formula to figure out your time space calculation. That number, that percentage at the end of those calculations is what as a home-based provider you're going to use for any expense that, that you have in terms of, because I remember it also includes in there the exclusive spaces. So you're going to use that for your, uh, any of your spaces, any of your expenses that involve the family, the use of your family home. So that's what time space is. Um, let's just see if anybody doesn't mind um, in terms of maybe our, our Spanish speaking provider would like to uh, see if that helped, if they have any other questions, and then I'll I'll listen in to, to hear if we have any kind of translation on, uh, see if they have any further questions on time space. Now, what I do see is that we do have a question about 
do those groups, are they available in Spanish? And I'm, I'm glad that you brought that, brought that up. So those groups at this particular time are not available in Spanish. So that, um, that has not been, been um, uh, basically arranged. If you have uh, some understanding of the English language, your, the fellow participants will be extremely patient with you in the groups. So even though perhaps English is not your, may not be your native language, if you speak some English, you should join. You know, they're, they're, it's a very flexible, small group situation where we certainly, you know, if, if uh, you feel comfortable uh, with your understanding and your comprehension of English, join. But, you know, go ahead and register. But I am sorry, right at this time, we do not have um, the Spanish uh, groups at this, at this point, the small study Spanish groups. I do see we have a question here from Laura um, that you have a question not pertaining to the webinar and it is okay if you ask that. I may not have the answer, but if I don't, I will find out uh, the answer to that question. So um, if we don't have any further, further questions, then what we'll go ahead and do is I'll take that question from Laura. So Laura, if you wanna come off mute, by all means, please do. And we'd be happy to uh, answer your question, or at least we can take it down and get an answer for you. And while we're waiting for Laura, I'll just see if, if you know, does anybody see any other, um, Margaret, you see any other questions in the chat? Well, I think we have a question here. Is it possible? No, we don't, but the I believe that DECAL will be posting a recording of the webinar as they do, uh, I believe, all of the webinars. So you can access any of the previous topics as well as, as today's presentation that will be posted. And Laura, I'm not sure if you're still with us. I, I'm going to look for you and see here. If I happen to see Laura, so Laura, I see you still in the room. Um, are you not able? Let's just see here if you maybe you weren't able to take yourself off of mute. Hey there, can you hear me there now? You go. Now I can hear you. I apologize. Okay. So, yeah, you yeah. had to take me off of mute. I think you guys had it set, so you yeah, I, I didn't couldn't control yeah. that. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't um, realize that. So. That's okay. I was feverishly looking because I do a mute. I mean, a Zoom once a month, uh, once a week, and I could not see where I could. I mute myself. I think um, I'm, so this, I'm used to meetings where you could, so I apologize. <laughs> uh, my question was, I know you mentioned, briefly mentioned about the groups um, that were going to get formed, and I filled out that registration form and, and the questionnaire or whatever. So when will those groups start? Because I think those are the ones that are tied in with a stipend. Yes, so they are tied in with a stipend. So those groups actually have started, but the registration um, process continues because there are several groups for each track. So okay, so because you have that's what I'm started... Okay, I'm confused because I haven't gotten any information about that. And I called last week saying that I hadn't gotten any information. I registered as soon as it came out mm -hmm. and answered the questionnaire. And I've been waiting to get information. Now, I've been doing the um, thriving childcare business stuff yeah. that are like this meeting, but it's not a group meeting in the evenings kind of thing. So I thought that was going to be something different. Okay. And well, I keep what, thinking I was missing out on it, but I called and no one's answered me. So oh, ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry, but I, I know a direct way that I can. Uh, okay. Margaret and I just happened to work with the people that handled the okay. registration. So if you don't mind, would you mind putting your um, email address in the chat? Okay. And if you do that, Let's just make sure that we get your email address because then I can go right to the project link and we will have our project uh, project link, our project lead. Uh, there we go, Angela family. Margaret, are you able to grab that for me? And if you just want to uh, go ahead and get Angela. Angela, what we'll do is I'll reach out to our project lead and we'll make sure that 
we can go ahead and, and get that taken care of there. I see a note from, okay. Can I get the same projects too? So I'm not sure exactly what that refers to. Are you referring to the, the small study groups? And then we also have a mention here, 1230, 130 is the hour for the groups. Are we referring also to the small study groups because they are available at different times. There are many, uh, many small study groups going on at different times throughout the week and different weeks. So let's just see if we have some clarification. So can you get the same projects to your, what you would like to register for the small study groups if that's the case? If you do go to the decal.ga.gov forward slash thriving website, you are able to register. I think it's a little weird that Laura is having that issue. So, uh, but just please know that, that it is still ongoing, the registration. And I have a note here that says, I have been in a few small study groups, but I'm not sure if I am in the correct ones. So thank you, Mark, <coughs> for put the registration link there. Um, these have just started. So if you were in previous small study groups, I would guess that these are not, the, those were not the study groups that are going on now where there is the stipend. If you go to the registration link that Margaret has put here, so which is the forms.monday.com. Um, Laura, were you able to get that far into the forms section? Um, can you hear me? I'm, I'm, I'm so off mute. I can hear um, you. Yep. Yeah, I've done it twice, actually. And then randomly, last week, I got an email, or maybe it was the first of this week, saying, um, I'm looking, looking for it. It was basically saying, uh, we have two sets of information for you. Um, let me, I'm trying to look for it. So you've gotten my information, but and I've called, I've emailed somebody else before, and I've been doing this for like four weeks. Trying oh, to get yeah. into the studies, uh, the small group studies, and I can't, I can't get get there. I don't not getting emails. I've been checking my spam, but like I said, I just randomly got an email this week from, um, I can't find it now. That's uh, it's it's either going to be from Ashley. Oh, here it is. It was from Georgia Coaching at oh. Civis. Um, okay, so uh -huh. the actual and coaching. it okay. and it just says thank you for registering for the small study group. Based on the information provided in your registration, we now have two similar registrations. So I know you got the first one, mm. but I've not, that's the only email I've gotten and I've not gotten anything on doing the small studies groups. Okay. So Laura, can you just do a, a private message, a direct message yes. to me now in the chat with your phone number? Okay, sure. Yeah. But if you don't, if you don't mind, that would be great. Um, well, it's, it doesn't look like it will let me do that oh, in this, yeah, in this group up. for whatever um, uh, are you reason. Are uncomfortable giving me your phone number now or? No, that's okay. fine. 229-977-4763. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. I'm sure I have someone on, um, we have someone on the Civitas staff who can call you and, and we Perfect. can figure out what that what that's about because as you can see we're actively recruiting folks to join yeah and it's uh you know we had the first two today amazing feedback so um, we definitely want to get you in there so i will reach out to uh, our contact at civitas who handles the registration <clears throat> who oversees that particular email address and we'll we'll get this figured out are you Perfect. available a little later today Laura? Uh, yes. I mean, all my kids are napping right now um, and they'll be up by three, but okay. then they leave at four. Okay. So even would they be able to get a voicemail if they don't get you? Is that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can okay. still try to answer the phone. I can't okay. go through like a deep, very detailed conversation at that time, but right, understand, uh, understand. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll try okay. to answer it. Yeah, you will. You will hear from someone, Laura. It may even be me, but you will. Okay. Yeah, you will hear good. from somebody today. I have two two nine nine seven seven four seven six three. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. You're very welcome, and we look forward to you joining those. <clears throat> well, we will get you all set up there. Do we have anything else in the Q and A that needs to be answered? 
Can you explain the three hundred dollar <laughs> stipend? So, actually, Ms. Carter, I I really don't have the details other than if you participate in the the uh, small study groups through the entire process, there is a, a stipend. So you would receive, you would end up receiving a stipend. I don't have the exact details. I tend, I, on uh, this particular project while I'm presenting, I actually don't uh, oversee the project for Civitas. There may be more details at the website, but as, um, as was mentioned, Margaret, would it be possible, could you put that, the email address that's directly for Georgia, the Civ Civstrat email address? I don't want to misquote it, if you don't mind. Yeah, putting. of course. I'll grab that now. That's great. Thank you. Margaret's going to go ahead and put in where you can ask any questions. So if you would like to find out more about that and you don't see it either on the website that we have posted here on the slide or um, when you go to the forms, it's not answered. I'm, uh, unfortunately, I'm not aware of where that would be, but uh, Margaret is going to put the email address for all of the correspondence. And I want to say, I think, Laura, there was a one-off on that because our team is always so responsive. So we will, we'll get to the bottom of Laura and you shouldn't um, hesitate to go ahead and reach out to that email. So it will, it will be addressed. It's, it's manned, <coughs> excuse me, it's looked at several times a day, so we'll figure we'll figure that out. I have to take a drink. I apologize. <laughs> but once that's in the chat, then we're going to go ahead and I think end things for today. We're you know, we're ending about five minutes early. That there. Wait for that. And Margaret, just because it's hard sometimes for me to navigate through the uh, chat and the Q&A, just let me know once you've posted that. Thanks. Yeah, so the email address for um, all of our Georgia coaching, including those small groups, is in the chat now. Great. Um, we will answer any questions that you have there. Um, they check that email multiple times a day, so they should get back to you as soon as they can. Okay. Is that in the chat to all participants? Margaret? Yes, that is to everybody. Okay, great. It, it, it just shows you that I don't see it. So I apologize. Apologize, everybody. So Margaret has gone ahead and put that in the chat. That's the email address that if you do have any questions for all things regarding to the Thriving Child Care Business Academy, uh, you please, that, that Civitas can help you with, please go ahead and, and um, send that email over to us and we'll be happy to, to do that. And... Uh, with that, if everybody has that, you also, if you've missed any information, you know, you can reach out directly to DECAL, to um, to the Business Academy website, and they'll have contact information there. We'd be happy to put, um, put you in contact. And for our Spanish-speaking provider with questions about time-space, you certainly should feel free. I have someone on staff who could answer any email questions. So again, reach out to the email address that uh, Margaret has posted, go ahead and reach out and um, we can always put you in contact with someone who can give you some more information if you don't happen to find a guide in the library that answers your question. So we certainly want you to have information there. Well, thank you, Kathy. Kathy said that oh, there, there's GA coaching. Kathy, thank you very much that this was informative. I, please, by all means, go and look at that li the uh, list of the upcoming webinars. We would love to have you participate. All right. Well, with that, folks, we are going to end our webinar for today. And I want to thank you all for having me. I really do appreciate everybody joining us. And I hope that they had some value here. And we know the, the fantastic work that DECAL is doing and that now is being able, you know, is being a, a made available through the Thriving Child Care Business Academy. So by all means, continue to support them because they support you. And Laura, just put another reminder to please put in your PDS number so that we can make sure that your attendance is, is verified and so you can get your certificate. So 
Thank you very much, Laura, for doing that. And then Margaret, can you just make sure that we can access the chat and the Q&A afterwards so that those don't get lost? That would be great. Okay. All right, so with that, folks, I'm gonna go ahead and, and end the webinar and we look forward to speaking with everybody. So um, we hope to connect soon. Thanks so much. Take care. <laughs>